Hi, and welcome to the History Lessons in the Dupedia World. Today, continuing the lesson on the Neolithic Revolution, we are going to go a bit deeper in the domestication of plants. How did agriculture come to be? How did domesticate the plants and how they developed new technology, new tools to work with more extensions of them? How all this started? Well, at the very first, uh, well, at the very beginning, we didn't have much variety. The first plants to be used, uh, to be domesticated, were basically two cereals and legumes. The two cereals that we've got data on, from uh, radiocarbon carbon dated up to 8300 BCE, is wheat and barley. The legumes that we know that were used extensively in that time. The first ones are chickpeas, peas and lentils. This we all talking that it's about uh, in the fertile crescent, remember Middle East region. We'll see further along in this lesson how in different areas of the world different obviously different plants were used. But as we're taking for the beginning, the example of the Fertile Crescent, what we call today the Middle East, that's the first plants that were taken and used by humans to produce more food. Even if they started using these plants, they actually, this just didn't go like wham directly one day they change at this stage they still kept depending on wild plants and wild animals as as everything goes it wasn't really a strongly reliable source at the start and we'll see some reasons why firstly i want to have a look at how they must, we know this, but people must have had to observe a lot and take a, and make the conclusions to understand how plants would grow out of the land. If you're not observing and see how seeds fall and know that where that seed, seed fell, a plant came out, you could think it's just magic. Probably they would have started observing this process in which wild plants developed and then they obviously got interested in keeping them producing. So they understood that the fruit or the seed was the reason why a plant was growing. I have to say this. For us, it seems pretty obvious because we know. If you didn't know, would you figure it out that easily? Hmm. So when they figured out that a new plant was created by a seed falling into the ground, that would probably have sparked the fact they kept the seeds and then they chose to plant them in fertile places where there was more water and better land. They probably did some trial and error, just putting it in the backyard and not having much success. And then seeing probably as many things in this period, we believe that through just observing nature, you could determine which parts, which places 
you could find more wild plants. You find more wild plants next to rivers, places where these rivers overflow or places where there's wells. So little by little they had to figure out all this basic stuff and improve it from just this really specific part they would also go improving the plants by actually selecting better grains and later on they would even start mixing different strains to resist plant diseases that's really down the line but evolving from the basic uh, I put a seed in the land what happens to actually working with them and modifying this wild plant by selection because it, there has been great changes that we actually take for granted many of the types of plants that we consume nowadays has changed enormously i mean look at the pictures i put uh you can you have here in front throughout the centuries they've been selected certain plants were selected the ones that they produced bigger and more productive fruits the examples we've got here is bananas corn but for example peas too let's just observe a moment for example corn you see the the first little corn here the small corn this is the type of corn these people in the neolithic times would have access to imagine how much effort and time consuming to get this what would it be to get the same amount that we get with just one with all these little ones and the bananas we normally just eat a banana straight away and never even think about the seeds do you really find many seeds if you do it probably if it's in a western country it probably surprises you quite a lot look at what would be the original banana you had little space for the fruit for what we consume it was basically lots of seeds so i don't only want to highlight the fact that they've been modified expressively it, these specific plants were chosen and they were worked on so you you chose to use the seeds of the better plant but also the fact that as they weren't as productive you had to put a lot more time and effort to be able to produce the same quantity of what we are used to consuming today agriculture is not the way, easy way out at all also we have to say that those who adopted cultivation they just started as we said with a couple of types of cereal we show it, it was shown before wheat and barley later they went they increased the variety and we found oats and rye so they started combining this also but not only that they discovered the plants you could domesticate them and use them for food but they started using grains for 
fiber. So they grew crops like flax and cotton that later on they would incorporate for clothing. So these societies are not only working for food, they'll start also working the land for the clothes. This is quite, quite an innovation. Also, as we've mentioned before, every area in the world would adapt and find its crops. The ones we've mentioned before are from what today is the Middle East. But for example, the African forest, you found crops like cassava root crops, tree crops like bananas, palm nuts. People just adapted to what was in nature and they incorporated it using the plants, discovering how to control and how to plant and have crops and fruit trees that they could easily access for their nutrition. In northern China, for example, uh, millet was a base, uh, especially in the area close to Yellow River Basin, and later in mainland South East Asia, basically, rice. This is the most famous cereal, well, the most famous for Asia, but it would start especially in mainland Southeast Asia. And of course, we can't forget the Americas. And there we have corn, obviously, but they also had manioc, that's root, um, like potato, but really tougher, and sweet potatoes. So you have two root plants and the corn. Obviously, you have all this innovation in the new plants you're using. You needed some new tools to work at them, to be able to get all this produce more easily instead of just picking it by hand that sometimes was really difficult. There'll be an explosion of variety. Although at the first, um, they still maintain stole, stone tools, okay? They keep weapons made of flint, uh, scrapers for preparing hides. They all stay the same, but the introduction is new also new stone tools there's first using microliths to for spears and arrows and then for re harvesting grains they will use size also made from flint neolithic tools were often retouched all over by pressure making the flaking giving them this characteristic appearance that it was normally really polished. We also see this hand axes that they're using more complicated complements with wood and making them stick together. Also, you have this hand mill. These are really important innovations especially when you're talking about ha harvesting and planting cereal not only these hand mills that already existed start evolving but where do we keep the seeds until now people were moving up and down and they could not really keep and conserve much food. Now they actually need to keep the seeds, keep the grains, not only to eat, but also to be able to plant. 
So we've, in all these settlements, we've found holes in the ground that would maybe have just a hole, and they they would there they would keep the grains from the natural elements. It would it would keep them cooler, but also little by little, they create this hole in the ground, but they'll put some pot inside just to make sure you don't lose produce. You would put a pot, leather, something to cover the hole and then put the grain in. This was just an introduction to how plants were domesticated. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next